Okay, good morning, church. Um, so for those of you who, who don't know me, and probably most of you, um, as Richard said, my name's Sonia, and I've just been at uh, the church here for just over um, three years, and I live in a part of Sheffield called Mearsbrook, which is about 10 minutes, 15 minutes away uh, from Crooks. How many of you know where Mearsbrook is? How many of you have been there? It's quite a few, actually. It's a lot more than I expected. Um, Maysbrook is in the south west of Sheffield. Not that that actually really means anything to me at all, um, because I have no idea where I am most of the time. I've lived in Sheffield for just over six years, and I still have to use Google Maps to get to about 90% of the places that I go to um, from one day to the next. And it's common knowledge um, to those who know me really, really well, uh, just how geographically diminished I am. Um, I find it really hard to visualize where I am in relation to where I'm trying to get to uh, and where I want to be. So, And if I'm really honest, I actually Googled um, this week um, to check that Maysbrook was in the south of Sheffield because I genuinely didn't know for sure. Um, but I thought it would be handy to share that as a helpful fact for those of you who also don't know where you are. Um, but I joined STC just as we were coming out of lockdown with my late husband, John, who died last year. Some of you will have known John. And so I'm here and I am literally finding my way forward. John was the one who knew which motorways took you to which places. And he read the maps in our family and I could often be found behind him in Derbyshire asking if we were nearly there. So um, it's, it's good that I've got here today. I'm here now. And I'm really thankful for the people that are in my life, that God has added to my life, um, in particular in um, the small group that I'm in, in the tables group. Helen sat there. Um, can't see Becky, but she might be here. Um, shout out to Cross Pool Tables. That's the one I'm in. And I'm here now, and I'm thankful for really good friends who love Jesus, um, for praying friends like Heather, um, who have been a blessing over the last year, and for this church, and also for this community of people that I get to do life with um, in this season. I feel like it's really important to let you know that I have no qualification for standing in front of you today. Um, I spoke in the nine o'clock service, and my stomach's still churning, and my knees are still knocking, and that's why I've got a skirt on today. Um, and I need to let you know, even though you just laugh, that I'm not funny. Um, I'm not good at telling jokes. Um, I think Tom was expecting me to be able to tell jokes, but I can't tell jokes. Um, and unlike Richard, I will probably stand right here and um, adhere quite closely to my notes. And I might even hold on to this thing so that I don't fall over. Um, being serious, my only qualification is an uncomfortable yes that I said. Um, when the scared parts of me said no. So um, that's what I'm going to bring you. So the theme for today's message is holy habits. Um, and today we'll be looking at that in Ephesians chapter 5. So if you've got your Bibles or you've got your phones, um, we're going to be reading from verse 1 through to 7 in the NIV version, but it will also be, and it is on the screen, um, for you to follow. I'm going to follow it here because I can't read that. It says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient." Therefore, do not be partners with them. My first thought when Rachel Royal sent this scripture to me in September was, oh no, this is a bit too hard for me. So I'm going to pray. 
Lord, I thank you um, that we're here today. Thank you for every person that's in this room. Jesus, I would just ask you to help me to say the words that you've given me to say today. Lord, I acknowledge your presence with me. I thank you that you're always here. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. We ask you to show us the things that you want us to learn today. Amen. So I take great reassurance at the very beginning of this passage that we're not being asked to do anything by ourselves. And that before we even consider the bits in this passage that might be hard to, to face or to, to look at, things that might challenge us in our own lives, that we're being pointed towards help. The first one begins by simply stating, follow God's example. As someone who does get lost easily, I appreciate being able to follow my sat-nav. And I, and I use it, you know, wherever I go, I follow it. I could tell you a really quick, funny story, actually. Um, I didn't think I was going to tell you this, but I will. Um, I went to Italy a few weeks ago um, uh, in June, July, for two weeks with my son. And um, we went to Florence, we went to Siena, and then we went to Rome. I'm unscripted here, so this is dangerous. Um, and then we went to Rome. But the plan was I'd hired a car and um, used the car in Florence and Siena. And the plan was to hand the car back in Rome. Um, because you don't really need a car in Rome. So when we got to Rome, it was a Friday, and um, arrived there, got our things into the apartment that we were staying in, and then I said to my son, come on, son, let's go and get the car straight back so we can get settled in and go out. And um, the airport that I was dropping the car off, um, Europe car, was 25 minutes from the apartment. About an hour and a half later, um, keeping my eyes on the road but very much adhering to my sat nav we arrived and the Colosseum was on the left and I realized that I had had my eyes so intently on my sat nav that I had not taken any notice of how lost and how many wrong turns I'd taken I'd not looked up to actually see where I was and so um, I really do get lost uh, very easily and I really do appreciate being led but I feel lost in my own personal life sometimes too. Where am I? Am I heading in the right direction? Are there things that I should be focusing on? Are there dreams that I should be dreaming? And in my faith as well sometimes, my walk with God. When times are really hard, it can be difficult to see the road ahead. This year has been a really tough year for me. And following God's example in my grief story, in my grief journey, has been difficult. And there have been times when I've got really lost. I wonder if any of you can relate to the same. I wonder if you've felt lost in your own lives sometimes, in need of help, in need of someone to reach out and say, follow me, let me show you how to do it. So in this passage, there's a call to follow. And for me, I see that as a meaning that we're heading somewhere. We're leaving one place to go to another place but we don't have to tap a, tap, tap a destination into Google Maps to get there. We get to follow God. And we can take courage here that the destination's already been preset for us. The verse goes on a little further and it says, we're not only to follow God's example, but we're to do it as dearly loved children. So we have a call to follow, and then this passage is also asking us to do it from the context of our status as dearly loved children. I'm a mum to two 28-year-olds, a daughter and a son, Kelsey and Josh, and I love my kids deeply. And I've got a very different relationship with my son, um, who is my birth son, to my daughter, who is my adopted daughter. I fostered Kelsey from the age of 14, and I adopted her at 16. And it's been hard to share in love with Kelsey um, over the years. She's really struggled to allow herself to live in the experience of being a loved daughter. And I have a really special relationship with my son. I've loved him since 1996. With my son, I can see how his life really flourishes as he experiences being a loved child. I've watched how unconditional love has shaped him and how it's guided him through his life and how when he's walked through really difficult times in his life, that love has been what has led him. There's been times when I've looked at him and I've thought, I would do it like that. I 
And he looks like me. People often say to me, he looks like you. And now at the age of 28, he's retraining. And uh, he's retraining in his career to follow in my own footsteps. I was thinking uh, this week how there's not really been a day in um, my son's life and in, uh, in his life where he's been out of relationship with me. Um, and in particular in his adult life, there's never been a day when he's uncoupled from love. He's never disconnected that thing that we have together. It's quite special. We've walked in love all these years. So the holy habit I want to highlight today is walking in love. Verse 2 says, And walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we're being asked to follow God's example, to imitate him. And just as my son has begun to imitate me in many areas of the life that he's leading, we're called to be imitators of God. Just as that earthly example of both of my children, we as children, are called into an experience of being loved by God. And it's from that place alone and only from that place that we're asked to lay down our lives in sacrifice to the one who's already laid his life down for us. We're to walk in the way of the cross. Galatians 5.24 tells us that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And in being crucified with Christ, we choose to live by the Spirit, keeping in step with the Spirit, in relationship with God's Holy Spirit that lives in us. And in crucifying our flesh, we make a decision not to uncouple ourselves from love, knowing that when we do that, we can quickly revert back to living from our own worldly desires and our worldly habits. Christ's life poured out on the cross for us is the example that we walk in. And in the natural, we can, um, we can see how difficult that can be. You know, just walking in love with families is hard, it's tricky. Walking in love with your neighbours, or a harsh employer, or an abusive partner, spouse, or a hurtful friend who doesn't know that they're hurtful. It can cause us to respond in ways that doesn't reflect God's example that we're speaking of today. We need help. So when we consider the call that comes in the following verses to live lives that have holy habits, we remember that we live as ones that are loved by our Father who is holy. And it's the fact that our Father is holy that that impacts the way that we lead our lives as loved children. And that is what helps us to lead our lives as Christians. That our Father is a holy Father, that's the example we follow. So Paul's calling us to lay down some things, hallmarks of the world. And they're hallmarks of the world that sometimes creep into our own lives. Sexual immorality, any kind of impurity, any kind of greed, obscenity, foolish talk, and coarse joking. Those ones can be really easy to slip into, foolish talk. We're being asked to live the lives that look different to the world. To live lives that have holy habits inside of them. Ephesians 4 verse 1 asks us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling we have received. And again, we have a reminder that we're not doing that on our own. We have God's example. But we also know from John 14 that we're not orphans. So we choose to walk in our identity in Christ in a manner of worthy, that's worthy of our calling. As we follow Christ's example, just as Jesus followed his own heavenly father's example, our lives change and we begin to look like him, like father, like son, like father, like daughter, loved children who walk in love. Just as we heard Jesus cry out, not my will, but your will be done, we too have that same response. 1 John 2 says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Another version, the ESV says, whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So we remind ourselves, John 3.30, that he must increase and we must decrease. And this is our mission as Christians, that we would walk in the way of love and live in the way of love, live in the way of the one who is love, and that we would look more like him And as we become more like him, our lives would reflect him and he would be glorified. 
we jump back to Ephesians 4, verse 32, which is the verse that precedes the passage from today, we can see examples of holy habits that we can adopt and, and seek to have in our own lives. We can see how Christ shines a light for us to follow as we walk in love, being kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God has forgiven us. And I don't know about you, but I certainly know that for me, as I get hold, older, a bit of my Jamaican slipped out there, as I get older, um, I find I need to follow God's example with much more intention. I notice on a daily basis that my desire to, to look like him and to walk like him in love with purpose with each step becomes more intentional. It feels more important. I can be moody and irritable and disappointed and I'm way too serious. I'm working on being less serious. The world has always been a serious place to me and I'm working on being less serious. I have to work hard to follow God's example, not to be cantankerous like my granny was. My grandmother was called Celestine. She died about 15 years ago now. And she was a cantankerous lady. She was a good lady, but she was a cantankerous lady. She could kill a person with a look at a thousand paces. She would look at you and you would know you were done. When you got it wrong, you just were out of her favor and it would last for the longest time. She wouldn't bless, bless you with even a glance in your direction and you would feel deep down on the inside of you the impact of her lack of compassion and care for you because she wanted you to know how far you had fallen from her good graces. And as I said, there were of course lots of good things about my grandmother, lots of wonderful things about her, but it's not her example that I seek to follow in my life. I wonder if that's true for any of you here today. We can all be a little bit like Celestine, my grandmother, especially when we're hurt and disappointed. Our unthoughtful words can come out. We can lack in generosity with our forgiveness and we can be untouched by the plight of others who are suffering because of our own hurt and brokenness and sadness. I saw that in my own journey over the last year, how sometimes I found it hard to notice others because of what was going on for me. That's why we need to develop and grow these holy habits in our lives. But like all habits, they take a while to be formed. Ephesians 4 encourages us to put off our old self and to put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And it isn't a, a one-time job it's not a one-time deal we don't just put it off and it's a job done it's a continuous putting it off um that, that we have to go on putting off an old self focused on its own desires we walk in a new identity as children who are holy like our father is and we can remember that we've got access to help as we walk in love I think that's the, the bit that we sometimes forget. Actually, I remember um, a time last year, I was having a really, really bad day. It was um, whilst my husband was um, having chemotherapy and I was juggling time and juggling, juggling my com commitments. And um, I remember I had a counselling session. I'm a counsellor. I had a session with a client um, online. I think it was like seven o'clock. And my husband hadn't finished his chemo yet, and so I was navigating time, thinking, how am I going to do this? I'm sat in the car park at Western Park waiting to pick him up, but I need to get home, and I want to give him some chicken soup because I want to take care of him, but I also want to take care of my client. And I remember I rang Heather from... Um, I always ring Heather. I rang Heather from Western Park Car Park, and I said to her, Heather, I'm overwhelmed. And she, she said to me, thank you for sharing that with me. And she said this... You do know God knows how to get you where you need to go. And um, it was the most profound thing that I'd ever heard. And I lean on that so often that God knows how to get me where I need to go. Because when I get lost, that is a real assurance for me. We have access to help as we walk in love. We have access through God's presence as we walk with him. And we don't have to strive to be perfect or do it alone. Psalms 119 says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we have help to walk in love and not stray. 
And I love the like two or three, six, five prayers. I listen to them each day. I try to listen to them each day as a daily habit. Father God, would you remind me now of the ways in which I have sinned today through negligence, through weakness, or my own deliberate fault? I take a moment to confess my sins before you now. So again, we're not meant to walk alone. And Psalms 139, this is one of my favorite verses. Search me, God, and to know my heart. Test me and to know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So God's promising again to lead us as we walk in love and as we follow his example. So we've received his ultimate sacrifice of love given through Jesus Christ. We're called to walk in that love and to give it away to others, just as God loved and gave to us through his Son. So let us walk worthy and let us walk holy as we seek to grow in our holy habits. Amen.